From wherever you're watching us, good evening from the broadcasting headquarters of TV 47 right here in Kenya's capital, Nairobi. Welcome to the Daily Report on this Monday, the 18th of March 2024. And thank you so much for choosing TV 47 to inform you, the qualified station in town. My name is George Maringa. The wonderful Roda Nyamai is on Sign Language Interpretation tonight. Now, as is the tradition, every Monday we bring you the Daily Report and the segment every Monday evening power and politics. Now, you will recall that when President William Ruto took over in this uh, current administration, he appointed a few, uh, several young PSS principal secretaries. One of them is my guest tonight, none other than Betsy Njagi, the principal secretary for Blue Economy and Fisheries. Tonight, we explore the waters of the oceans, the rivers, as well as the maritime, uh, or rather the fisheries and uh, blue economy to be able to explore uh, what is happening in that docket? What have they been able to do so far? By the way, do you understand or are you aware of that docket? Uh, what do you know about it? What do you think should be done? And how would you uh, rate the performance of that docket so far? My guest tonight, Betsy Njage, Principal Secretary, Blue Economy and Fisheries, will be speaking to us exclusively. This is, his, this is her first ever interview on national television so you want to listen to this wonderful uh, lady and what she is doing in that docket start talking to us at tv 47 news on x formerly twitter at george maringa underscore at ps underscore betsy njage use the hashtag daily report hashtag uh, power and uh, politics now we also have a lot lined up for you even as we look at the uh, tradition that has been every uh, Monday, where we also invite you to uh, channel your feedback through our SMS lines at 22047, start with your name, where you're watching us from, followed by your question and feedback regarding the show. Now, PS is already in the building. She is just getting a little bit ready, and when that happens, we will have that discussion in just about half an hour or so. But first, a sneak peek into what's making headlines tonight. Tonight... The doctor's strike is still on. This is happening despite negotiations between the government and doctors, negotiations that have so far failed to provide a solution. New info reveals that county and national government officials are the owners of many bars that violate the law on illicit brew. And a sharp warning for those in the habit of heckling the president. And they must maintain the peace in their political meetings. We thank you for choosing TV 47 to inform you. As always, we invite your feedback, of course, as we look forward to that conversation with my guest tonight, P.S. Betsy Njage, Principal Secretary, Blue Economy and Fisheries. Tonight, we explore the waters of our nation at George Maringa underscore at TV 47 News at P.S. underscore Betsy Njage 22047 is our SMS line. Start with your name where you're watching us from, followed by your question, comment or feedback regarding the show. As I informed you, Rhoda Nyamai is on sign language interpretation, interpretation tonight and she says my name on sign language is George Moringa. This evening, several people are feared to be seriously injured after a Kenyatta University bus and a truck were involved in a crash around Maungu area of Taita Taveta County on the Nairobi Mombasa Highway. The accident happened at, the t at a time the area was experiencing heavy rains that authorities believe limited visibility for drivers. Taita Taveta police and emergency responders are on the scene and have evacuated the victims to local hospitals for treatment elsewhere. 
five people are confirmed dead and 18 others hospitalized at Tanwek Mission Hospital after they were involved in a fatal road accident which occurred at Salaik along Silibwet Olengurwone Road confirming the incident Bomet Central Sub-County Police Commander Musa Omar said the accident involved a, tra a tractor ferrying sand and a PSV from Bomet travelers of the Matatu rather Bomet and Matatu, the, the vehicles were both headed to Bomet Town. We will be indeed following that developing story for you. To matters held and held cabinet secretary, that is Susan Nakumincha, has announced that her ministry is finalizing the process of posting, medic of posting of medical interns effective 1st April 2024. This was revealed during a meeting with the Kenya Medical Practitioners, Pharmacists and Dentists Union, KMPDU, on Monday with a name to bring to an end the ongoing doctor's strike. However, the union has revealed that they are yet to agree on on various issues, therefore the health workers strike will continue. Even after agreeing to a meeting with the Health Cabinet Secretary Susan Nakumicha aimed at finding a solution to end the doctor's strike, which has entered its fifth day today, the Kenya Medical Practitioners Pharmacist Dentist Union KMPDU has emphasized that they are not backing down. I just want to affirm that our strike is on as we gave the notice from 6th and from the commencement that it had from 13th. So this marks day five of the national strike. Among the issues that have been the core of dispute between the two parties, only one issue, that of posting on medical interns, has been agreed upon. According to the Health CS, the National Treasury has agreed to allocate funds to enable the employment. Happy to report that as a ministry we have made very good progress. And one of the issues was on the internship program. So we have agreed that they are going to participate in the review of the internship policy that is currently ongoing, chaired by the DG. But most importantly, we have also briefed the union and agreed that we have now received a confirmation from Treasury and beginning 1st of April, which is in two weeks' time, we are going to begin posting of all the interns. However, the doctors' collective bargaining agreement of 2017 still remains a contentious issue, even as CS Nakumicha underscores that the ministry is yet to find a solution in the coming week. In a rejoinder, KMPDU Secretary General Dav Giatella accused the ministry of repeating the same old script that has proven futile for years. So we have agreed that the ministry will uh, proceed with the negotiations because the status as it is, is that they had written to the ministry and the ministry had written back to them with a counter offer. But both parties were yet to sit at the table. So we have agreed that within this week, the ministry then calls for a meeting so that then matters that are in the CBA can be addressed and negotiations begin. We want outcomes for the doctors. We want outcomes for the basic salary arrears that has not been paid for seven years. We want outcome of letters posting the interns as per the collective bargaining agreement that was signed in 2017. We want outcomes that the doctors are struggling with postgraduates, that they can do their exams. We want outcomes that doctors are going to be employed in the country to actually run the UHC. Kenyatta National Hospital had gone to court seeking to restrain doctors working at the facility from downing their tools after the seven-day strike notice by KMPDU had elapsed. Nevertheless, health services across the country remain below expectation. 
Now, the Kenya Medical Association has threatened to move to court if the Kenya Revenue Authority, KRA, does not immediately withdraw the recently introduced electronic tax invoice management systems, ETMIS, in the health sector. KMA argues that the move by the tax collecting agency is in clear breach of the 2010 constitution and confidentiality since the information captured is likely to be at the risk of exposure. Kenya Medical Association. The Kenya Kwanzaa government is facing another bone of contention with medical practitioners. This time round, the Kenya Medical Association up in arms over the decision by the Kenya Revenue Authority, KRA, to introduce electronic tax invoice management system, IDMIS, into the health sector. The association argues that this move, which is anchored under the Finance Act of 2023, poses a great danger to privacy, more so of patients despite the guarantee of the same under the Constitution. KRA is seeking to force medical practitioners and healthcare institutions to disclose patient data, including patients' names, their sex, their hospitalization and treatment details, to the Kenya government through the KRA system. Kenya Medical Association, however, has threatened to move to court to challenge the use of the electronic system in the medical sector by KRA, urging the tax collection agency to immediately withdraw the system. Doctors took an oath to safeguard, among other things, patient confidentiality, enforcing doctors and other healthcare providers to disclose this information in the name of tax compliance is a violation of the Kenyan constitution. The association opines that through the system, crucial and private data of Kenyans will be at great risk of being exposed and abused by others. Thus, the move by the taxman is in breach of the constitution and confidentiality, since the information captured will be bound to violation of privacy. As regards to KRA using medical information in certain tests, I think to a pregnancy tests to deny deserving employment to Kenyans. So this is just a snapshot of the implication of disclosure of such information. The medics led by the association presidents Dr. Simon Kingondo and CEO Dr. Brenda Obondo noted that the move will also hinder diplomatic relations since doctors sub foreigners living locally who will protest their data being put on the said system. The William Ruto government has also come under sharp criticism as the association stated that it miss was introduced without public participation. Mugi William, TV 47. Indeed, thank you, Maggie William, for that report. And just to remind you, my guest is already here in studio, P.S. Betsy Njage. That conversation coming your way shortly. She's principal sutri for Blue Economy and Fisheries. Mindeleo Yawanawaki organization is set to conduct its national election process to begin tomorrow countrywide. Addressing the press in Nairobi, the election board chair, Anne Wamba, stated that the process will involve 1,450 wards, 297 counties and 47 counties for the new chair of the organization. The board is responsible for organizing my elections from the 1450 wards to the national level and deliver results to the AGM in the election year. We have 1450 uh, ward levels where we have to get women elected to represent those areas. The election board work will be guided by terms of reference to be developed. Mayo Constitution and the resolution of Mayo AGM of 9th December. Administratively and logistically, the board will be supported by the executive officer, the office of the secretary, and the administration officer. So that tells you that the chair of the Mandeleo organization is not involved in doing all this work so that she does not decide to stay or stay or get her candidate. So you, ha you see the process is very transparent, very transparent. My constitution regulation 3.1, elections shall be held after every five years in accordance with those rules unless advised by the AGM. We are going to be in the 1450 wards, the two nine sub-counties, the 47 counties and come to the national level. And therefore, this is to say our membership should get ready, register, and old members renew their membership, new members to register as new members and also those who are wishing to um, to buy for a position to get ready and to buy their nominations. 
Now, Cabinet Secretary for Ministry of Information, Communications and the Digital Economy, Elio Dawalo, has reiterated that President William Ruto's government will bring significant changes in the economic climate as he urged everyone, whether in the government or not, to unite so as to achieve the best results for the country. He has urged leaders to put aside politics and focus on growing the economy. <laughs> peane usaidizi kwa serikali ili serikali isikume agenda yake ya maendeleo time round there is no escape either you accept to work with the government or we bring the government to you that's the only option that we have so let's put aside our differences political differences between now and 2027 the only agenda that we have is politics of the economy if we are to do any politics politics of the economy to sort out the challenges facing the common one age the government has sorted out the areas of sugarcane farmers and soon we are going to have private investors coming in to pump money into those sugar companies so that they can again revert back to optimal capacity utilization here in Kano, the perennial flooding problem will eventually permanently be sorted out through Koroso in Dam. We're going to have fish landing sites along all the beaches in this region, starting from Musenge to Wichlum, to Luanda Kotieno, Asembo Bay, here in Kisumu, Kindu Bay, Homa Bay, all the way to Meho. We are going to have fish landing sites. That is already work in progress. All those beaches have been factored in the government's plan for revitalizing the blue economy. Now, Absa Bank has recorded a 12% net profit for 2023 to 16.4 billion shillings are attributed to increased digital transactions and a diversification to wholesale business. This is as the bank, rather this is the bank witnessed a reduction of foreign exchange income due to the drastic drop of the greenback performance to the shilling, reducing its attribution to income by 2%. The dividends per share by the bank now stand at 1.55 one shillings and 55 cents up from Kenya shillings 1.35 year on year. With a dividend share of a shilling and 55 cents, Absa Bank has recorded a cost to income ratio of about 39.7%, down from almost 50% in 2020. On the policy rate, um, in line with what's happening globally, uh, the monetary tightening that we have seen uh, across the world. The MPC took a number of decisions during the course of the year that has led to an increase in the, in the policy rates. In the FX, uh, we know the kind of year we had, 2023, um, there was continuous depreciation on currencies across the region and the Kenya shilling was, was one of those. This, as the bank has admitted the profits released for the last year, has been greatly compromised by the recent drop of the greenback against the shilling. Despite this, the bank has seen a 19% growth in revenue year on year to 54.6 billion, while customer deposits grew by 19% to 363 billion. And this is a good lead indicator for, for future growth. So that's a positive that we are, we are looking at. Customer deposits, a growth there of 19% to about 363 billion shillings, which is basically what is funding uh, uh, the assets growth that I've mentioned. Uh, the proportion here is, is interesting between consumer and uh, the wholesale business, it's actually balanced. It's 50-50. However, the true performance boost came from increased digital transactions at around 25%, as digital lending grew by 40%, while total credit offered to customers stood at $336 billion. This was further boosted by an increase in self-transaction by 98%. You know, in the digital space, we are seeing more and more customers using self-service channels. Uh, our digitally active customers increased by 25% in the year 2023, which is a significant increase. We are seeing self-service transactions in the high 90s. You know, 98% is as good as it gets in terms of transactions that are outside the, the branch network. 
return on investment for shareholders is now at 23.7 percent. Hibak Said for TV 47. Thank you, Hibak, for that. A memorandum of understanding on the mutual acceptance of certificates of competency is expected to be signed by the governments of South Korea and Kenya, providing Kenyan seafarers with the opportunity to seek employment on Korean ships, employing 1,000 officers and ratings per year. Speaking in Nairobi, Principal Secretary for Shipping and Maritime Affairs, Geoffrey Kaituko said, a delegation of government officers visited South Korea a few days ago and agreed to increase Kenya's Maritime Training Institutes to enable it meet the seafarers' demand. The highlight of the visit was the signing of an MOU between the Korea Institute of Maritime and Fisheries Technology and the Bandari Maritime Academy. The agent will be the Kenyan Maritime Liaison Officer and will work closely with the Korean government to handle any issues arising on board ships. As you all know, we have our own Maritime Labor Convention of 206, which Kenya is a signatory and which is being implemented by the International Labor Organization together with the International Maritime Organization and locally here by the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection with ourselves. And the whole purpose is to secure and protect our seafarers when they are on board foreign vessels. Um, and so this, this gap was identified, and therefore we have agreed that we will, we will, as soon as possible, have a mining agent here locally. We will be able to handle issues of recruitment and welfare of Kenyan seafarers. We as a country must invest in this, and we have to support the education of our, of our seafarers. Last year we entered into an arrangement with the our education loans board, where part of the money that we receive from merchant shipping is given to our education loans board, and the loans board therefore uses that funding to support uh, the scholarships and bursaries of students who are pursuing maritime courses in this country. Now, President Dr. William Ruto earlier today met with content creators and key stakeholders in the creative and digital space at State House, where he promised the creators that their content will be monetized by June this year, as Natasha Wairimo now reports. I've now gotten a commitment from uh, Clegg and uh, the Meta team that by June, all our creators will uh, now have an opportunity to really monetize everything that they do in that space. Put President William Ruto has assured content creators in the creative and digital space that their content will be monetized. This is in line with Kenya Kwanzaa bottom-up economic transformative agenda where nobody is left behind. The president added that the recent deal signed with tech giant Meta will form the basis for more innovations and expanding the creative space. Any of you will be eligible the eligibility criteria will be now available for content creators in Kenya. That's a big step in making sure that our content creators, the people who operate in the digital space, have an opportunity to monetize their talent, to give themselves additional revenue. And I'm truly grateful to Facebook for working with us this journey. Content creators have been urged to use this opportunity to their advantage in order to grow their brands. As Meta introduces monetization opportunities that will revolutionize how content creators like me operate, I will urge all content creators to seize these opportunities and to be able to create meaningful and engaging content because now we are moving also, and it's an additional to kufinya computer to a dollar, to wash a camera, tengeneza pesa. Cabinet Secretary for Ministry of Information, Communications and the Digital Economy, Eliud Owalo, has promised to sustain the digital programs for the youth to ensure they completely exploit the opportunities available in the space. As a ministry, Your Excellency, based on instructions and guidance we have received from you, we will sustain our digital skilling program for the youth so that they can get the requisite skills to enable them optimally exploit the potential within the creative economy. For TV47, I am Natasha Wairemo.
Let's get a sport now and Harambe Stars earlier today held their third presidential residential training rather as they gear up for the Four Nations tournament scheduled to take place from March 23rd to 26th in Malawi. It is almost full house at the Harambe Stars camp as some of the foreign players have joined the rest in camp. Joining Kenya in the tournament lineup are teams from Zambia, Malawi and Zimbabwe and kicking off their campaign the Engin Ferrat led side are set to clash with Malawi in their first match on Saturday, March 23rd at the Bingo National Stadium. This tournament presents a valuable opportunity to play more matches within the short international window in preparation for the upcoming 2026 FIFA World Cup and 2025 AFCON qualifying campaigns. Now, the Kenya under-20 national football team have intensified their preparation ahead of the Four Nations tournament set to take place uh, in Malawi. Owing to the withdrawal of Zambia, the tournament will now consist of other two teams, uh, two other teams rather, Zimbabwe, Malawi, and the Salim Babu-led side will kick off their campaign against Zimbabwe in their first match this coming Friday, and their second match will feature Malawi on Sunday at the Bingu National Stadium. This tournament is aims to develop and expose elite youth talent while also serving as preparation for the upcoming 2024 AFCON under-20 qualifiers later this year. <laughs> kuanzia under 18 tumekuwa na karibu karibu 3 weeks huko na Kisumu so tumekuja hapa tumeka nao 1 week na free tuko ready kulingana na vile tume train eh, achievement kitu ya kwanza hakuna football utaka ku lose eh, na join enda kwa tough tournament juu maybe at juu ya opponents venye wako but mimi na feel tuko well prepared to face anyone who comes before us Jackson covers a clock to time of 29 minutes, 11.20 seconds in the men's category to win the first edition of Dixon Kava 10 kilometers educational run held at Kainga Stadium in Kangundo sub-county. Kavesa was followed closely by the 10 kilometers Stephen Muthini and Alex Nzioka who clocked a time who clocked a time of 29 minutes 17 seconds and 29 minutes 46.60 seconds respectively. In the ladies category, Agnes Mwikali clocked 90.32 nebutes 0.430 seconds to win the ladies category, followed by Janet Nyeva, Wilfred Mbithi. I am very happy to win the game today. I thank the organization for the game. I am very happy to encourage upcoming athletes. I am very happy to win the game today. I am very happy to win the game today. Niko na game. Hii leo ilikuwa kama zoezi. Mwezi mwezi unaokuja niko na mbio ngambo. Ah, Search Republic. Ambayo kwa European. Ndio yenyewe inaitwa Prague. Prague au Marathon. Ndio vima sana. Na nimefaitiwa. So ndio niko na prepare leo. Kwa mbaya ilikuwa mzuri. Sipokuwa milima ilikuwa mingi na joto. Lakini nimepambana mali. Nilikuwa tunaweza. Nikaanza kukua mshindi. Nimekimbia ni cross country nikimbia TK lili. Nikaingia namba 5 kwenye ilikuanga Nairobi. Kwa sasa, sina mbio yote na yanda. Ajitarisha ya tuko masoezi. Njika kamwe, ngoje ya anda 20, na this year, netrali takuwa mwisi wa saba. Niente ni represent region kama southern, kwa matumaini, nisafanya, ayo, kwa mwenye si mungu, ame nisaidia ni kashinda leo, Pia kwa hiyo siku wala nisaidia tu, natika kamuwa kwa masoezi yangu. 
Absolutely. It is exactly 29 minutes past the hour. Thank you so much for staying with the Daily Report. Earlier on, I did promise you about my guest, Betsy Njage, Principal Secretary, Blue Economy and Fisheries. The PS is already here in studio. PS, Karibu sana to our studios. Thank you so much, George, and yeah. thank you for having me. It's a, great, uh, it's a great pleasure to have you indeed. And of course, you know, a question that arose uh, is, what does your docket do? Blue uh, Economy and Fisheries. Okay, thank you. Thank you, George. Yeah. Thank you, TV47, for having us. Brilliant. Uh, Blue Economy, it's basically mm -hmm. the exploitation and economic exploitation of blue resources within the blue space. Mm -hmm. When I talk about the blue space, I mean any space within the ocean, mm -hmm. the lakes, the water bodies, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So all activities that happen within the blue space, that is blue economy. Blue economy. And fisheries mm -hmm. is one of the activities. Brilliant. Yes. Uh -huh. You yes. wanted to say something? Yes. I want to also want to, uh, to mention that uh, there are so many activities that happen within the blue space. Mm -hmm. There's fisheries, as I've mentioned. Yeah. There's aquaculture. Mm -hmm. There's also tourism. Mm -hmm. You have seen a lot of tourism within the blue space with yeah. the arch and all. Yeah. There's also maritime transport. There's energy. There's mining, deep sea bed mining, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that all those activities, mm -hmm. and as long as they're exploited in a sustainable way, Brilliant. that is blue economy. Of course. Yes. And of course, uh, a lot of questions, you know, we are seeing from our viewers. Keep them coming. PS will be here. That conversation is starting in a short while at TV 47 News at George Maringa underscore at PS underscore Betsy Njage. Use the hashtag daily report, hashtag uh, power and politics. That is the segment that is coming up in a short while. PS and I will be back and we'll be having that conversation as we delve into the blue economy territory. Just stay with us. hii katika mfahamu kiongozi tutakuletea viongozi aina mbali mbali nilikuwa na nisani kama kumi mm -hmm. na pia nilikuwa nimenua minibus minibus ni koniwa mm. kushinda unaangalia simu ya mzee soma biblia ama ingia kwa washroom ujisukue eh, mpaka nimetoa <laughs> hivi i don't know whether any of my children would want to get into the political field sijajua bado kila alhamisi saa moja nusu kuendelea Join us on a journey through the concrete jungles and rising skylines where every beam, every nail tells a story of progress and vision. In every aspect of life, you know, you have to look at several dynamics. From groundbreaking... Nowadays with the tech, uh, you can check on different websites uh, or, or you check uh, online and you can see some inspiration. So at least that one would be a direction already. I'll know like what kind of style you, you're going for. To finishing touches, witness the dedication of the hard-working teams who bring these ambitious dreams to reality. The Realtor, Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. <laughs> katika mfahamu kiongozi tutakuletea viongozi aina mbali mbali nilikuwa na nisani kama kumi mm -hmm. na pia nilikuwa nimenua minibus minibus ni koniwa mm. kushinda unaangalia simu ya mzee soma biblia ama ingia kwa washroom ujisukue eh, mpaka nimetoa <laughs> hivi i don't know whether any of my children would want to get into the political field 
kila alhamisi saa moja nusu kuendelea every saturday at 8 pm Absolutely it is exactly 34 minutes past the hour. Thank you so much for staying with us right here on the Daily Report. Time now for the segment uh, power and politics even as we look as not so much of politics today because we are delving and swimming into the blue economy and fisheries world to be able to explore and of course to see the scorecard so far. And my guest is best placed to be able to have this conversation with earlier on I did introduce her to you but of course it doesn't hurt to introduce her once again Betsy Njage PS principal secretary for blue economy and fisheries of course she's among the youthful principal secretaries that the William Ruto led administration appointed into the docket of PS by the way madam PS uh, looking at the caliber and the crop of PSs that were appointed especially in this uh, regime yes. it's We, we can see there are more youthful PSs as compared to the past. Uh, how, how did you get appointed? <laughs> thank you, George, yeah. and uh, thank you for the question. Yeah, thank and thank you, TV47, for having us. Through the wisdom of His Excellency the President, mm. he looked around. We all applied for jobs. There were so many applicants. We were all shortlisted, mm. around a thousand, and others were shortlisted to around 500 number. And then we were appointed mm. 51 of us. Yes. So this was based on merit, mm -hmm. based on experience, based on the value you can come add to the people of Kenya. Mm. So basically it was based on merit, experience and the urge to deliver. Mm -hmm. So it depends how you were able to convince the interview panel yes. on how you can give service to the people of Kenya. Brilliant. Yes. And of course, um, what aspects of blue economy perhaps, you know, because Kenyans have also been asking on social media, had you explored that, you know, inspired this government and the panel to be able to appoint you? First of all, the aspects within the blue space look at uh, fisheries. Mm -hmm. Fisheries is very vast in Kenya. We have a big and blessed with the big Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. We have very many lakes. We have the likes of Lake Trukana, which is the biggest in Africa. Mm -hmm. We have Lake Victoria. Yes. We have uh, Lake Trukana, Lake Baringo, uh, Lake Naivasha. Mm -hmm. We also have Lake Jipe. Yes. And all these resources are resources that Kenyans and people within the fisher communities, within the riparian counties, mm -hmm. that is if it's Lake Victoria, if it's the Indian Ocean, that have been exploiting these resources. Yes. But also, you look at fisheries also from an aspect of aquaculture. Mm -hmm. Aquaculture is whereby you do fisheries farming either on land or on the lakes mm -hmm. or on the rivers or also in the dams mm -hmm. using either cages or ponds and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So the experience within that space having worked myself having worked within the county government uh -huh. i was able to look at resources within the national government mm -hmm. and ensure that we provide these services to the people of kenya mm -hmm. so that experience within the public sector and a bit of experience within the private sector also mm -hmm. brings in a blend of where you can be able to ensure that these resources that you're given and this trust you're given by the people of Kenya you mm -hmm. can be able to ensure we exploit them mm -hmm. in a very sustainable way mm -hmm. and ensure there's integrity within it and the prudent use of these resources mm -hmm. so that is the scope of whereby mm -hmm. i believe i was the best for this job brilliant and so it's been one year and some months yes um how would you rate your performance in this docket uh, perhaps on a scale of 1 to 10 Okay, yeah. our performance uh, in this docket, of course, I couldn't have done alone. Yeah. I've done this through the help of the leadership of uh, His Excellency the President and the entire executive. I also want to commend my minister, His Excellency Salim Vuria, who is the Minister of Mining, Blue Economy and Maritime Affairs. Yes. And of course, the heart of the department, which is the State Department for Blue Economy and Fisheries. That staff that we work together with, they are very hard working. it's a team effort and i can tell you for a fact our performance we have done over 80% mm -hmm. 
based on the KPIs and the targets we set for ourselves for the last one year. Mm. We have achieved over 80%. Mm -hmm. yes. And the, the blue economy, um, docket because it seeks to promote economic growth, social inclusion and improvement of livelihoods, uh, while at the same time ensuring an environmental sustainability of the aquatic resources. Yes. In the wake of climate change, you know, the most recent uh, convention, UNEA 6, um, when you look at how we are protecting our maritime, uh, the fisheries and the blue economy, Economy. Would you say that perhaps, according to the SDG goals as well, mm -hmm. we are at a point where we can say, fine, um, a lot had happened previously, but we are recovering and been, being able to ensure that we sustainably exploit our you know, blue economy and the fisheries as well? Yes, we are. And uh, you have mentioned it very clearly. When you look at uh, the UN 2030 SDG goals. If you look at the SDG 14, where our focus is mostly on the oceans and the blue economy space. Mm -hmm. And it's very clear written that uh, we need to, to exploit the resources in a more sustainable, give back to the community, and ensure the social inclusivity. As a state department and as a government, we have been able to do so many interventions to ensure that. I'll give you a couple of ex examples that sure. uh, really covers matters climate change. Mm -hmm. If you look at the sustainability of within the coastal region, if you look at the mangroves, the State Department together with other institutions within uh, the government of Kenya, that is the Kenya Marine Research and Institute mm -hmm. and also Kenya Forest Service, we have been able to plant over 1,000 acres of mangrove seedlings within the coastal communities. We have done that in the communities of Vanga, in Kuale, Gazi in Kuale. We are also doing the same in Lamu, and so on and so forth. This is a space whereby the communities are able to be sensitized on the importance of safeguarding the mangroves. And in return, they are able to gain a lot from that space, and this helps within their communities if it's some infrastructure development, that is uh, schools, mm -hmm. water projects, and so on and so forth. Another element within that space uh, of climate change is coral reef. We're able to protect the coral reefs. Remember where the coral reefs grow and the seagrass, those are the breeding grounds for fisheries. So the communities have already been sensitized on that. And if you can look within that space, especially in Lamu, there's a community that is already doing crab farming mm -hmm. within that space. Mm -hmm. So the communities are very well sensitized in these uh, climate change issues that we are facing as a country and uh, across the globe. Mm. And for that, we are able to give them incentives and also to educate them, capacity build them. And uh, if you look at the 15 billion trees uh, coverage uh, that we were doing a couple of months ago. Yes. We have been able to plant over one million seedlings of mangrove. Mangroves. Yes. Mangroves were part of the yes, planting. Yes, 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 ah, yes. Brilliant. Um, looking at the coastal communities, especially before you come now to the lakes um, up north. Yes. Um, the coastal communities have really, of course, for decades uh, relied on aquaculture, on marine, uh, you know, fishing and such activities. There has been the aspect of overfishing, of course, occasioned by overpopulation and, of course, other attributes. Mm -hmm. A key factor of VPS is diversification because the population is growing, but the marine, the aqua, the marine life mm -hmm. has also been diminishing over the years. Mm -hmm. How are you then helping or ensuring that we, they do not, or rather, you know, because they means also we do not deplete mm -hmm. our marine uh, life, especially in the coastal regions, in the coastal counties? Okay, thank you for that mm -hmm. question. One of the components we are looking at uh, is uh, governance. Mm -hmm. When you look at governance, we have been able to come up uh, with a policy on uh, aquaculture and fisheries mm. policy. Yes. The fisheries policy was already approved by cabinet last year, mm -hmm. 2023, April last year. Currently, we are working on aquaculture policy, which is around 60% complete. That is on governance. We have already developed regulations. We have done eight regulations. One of the regulations that we are doing is uh, aquaculture regulation and marine regulations. These regulations are supposed to ensure that there's governance within the blue space or the aquaculture space. Mm -hmm. The third element we are doing as a government, of course, is to develop infrastructure. One of the challenges that uh, our fisher folk have been facing is fishing on the onshore. Mm -hmm. So 
And when they fish on their own shore, they are not able to sustain those resources, yeah. or rather the product that they fish, that is the fish, they are mm -hmm. not able to store it in a conducive environment. Mm -hmm. So the government is developing infrastructure within those regions, within the coastal regions. Mm -hmm. I'll give you the names of the regions, which is uh, in Kuala we are doing a Moepe landing site. Mm -hmm. In Kilifi we are doing Kilifi Central. In uh, Lamu we are doing Mkowe. In Tanariva we are doing Kipini. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Mombasa we are doing Kidongo. Mm -hmm. These landing facilities have cold storage. They have ice making machines. They have processing plants. They have a, a place where even the beach management units, that is the fishermen, can be able even to conduct their business and also ensure that they plan their activities through the joint core management plants that we have developed. Mm -hmm. So with that, also we are supporting the fisher community with infrastructure, that is the vessels and the fishing gear, the right fishing gear that will not deplete or will not damage mm. The, the fisheries products within the, the space. Mm -hmm. So we are able to support them with those uh, equipment. And lastly, so that we can be able to create for them also another source of income. That is, yes, fisheries, but we can do it in an aquaculture environment. We are, we are developing a mariculture center of excellence. In this center of excellence, we'll have hatcheries, whereby we can be able to do brooding and breeding of uh, the fisheries or rather the marine species mm. as aquaculture or mariculture mm -hmm. and this we can be able to give to the fisher community in terms of fingerlings and they can be able to de continue developing their fisheries within on land or under sea or either on with the cages and so on and so forth mm -hmm. and also the last thing is also of course uh, to give them capacity building because when you go to fisher folk and tell them you're using the wrong years to fish all the wrong methods. How can we train them? Mm -hmm. So we are doing also training and capacity building, yeah. and more so we are giving them grants. Uh, for the last uh, one year, His Excellency the President was able to give a fisher community within the, the ocean side, or the, rather the coast side, 1.5 billion in grants that mm. will support them in all some of the activities that uh, we have mentioned. Okay, brilliant. So there's a time that you know you were, we had been told that we were having fish imported for China yes. from China. Yes. Talk to us about you know wh how you find this, how you found the situation when you came into that docket, and are we still importing fish from China? Okay, thank you, George. Mm. No, we are not importing fish from China. Okay. And the reason why we are not doing that is because we have enough fish farmers, mm. either commercial, if you are Tisano, we have enough water bodies, we have enough resources. Mm -hmm. So why would we bring other resources from another country? Mm -hmm. So this was killing the market. It was killing the effort that our fishermen, every day they wake up in the morning to go and look for this fish, mm -hmm. all these fish products, one for food security, within their own homes and also to do trading with them mm -hmm. so that they can bring money back to their homes and to their families. Mm -hmm. So as government, through the guidance of our president, we were able to ban fish products, especially tilapia from the Republic of China. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, brilliant. Um, let's look at this industry and it is a multi uh, million uh, Kenya shillings industry in terms of the amounts that come in. However, there has been the perennial problem of the communities mm -hmm. um, that go to the deep areas, the deep seas, mm -hmm. the deep lakes, to be able to fish out uh, and to get these products out here. Mm -hmm. And in between, it appears that the middlemen um, ha have been the largest beneficiaries because if you go to these communities, um, there is still the aspect of abject poverty, appears. And looking at how uh, these communities are able to perhaps you know, bring out the risks involved um, where is the imbalance by your assessment? Okay, mm -hmm. uh, thank you for that. Um, one of the challenges that uh, we have found within the Fisher community is that imbalance within the space. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we are doing as a government to address that is look at the value chain. Mm -hmm. When you look at the value chain and get it right on all aspects, then you'll be able to empower mm -hmm. the Fisher folk. I'll take you through the processes we are doing to address that value chain. Yes. Because you have to start from the market. Yes. Then you work backwards okay. to ensure that 
these fisher folk are not exploited by the middlemen. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've spoken to you about the governance. Yeah. We have come up with regulations that actually were even gazetted. So they are going to the department at the National Assembly for delegated registration so that they can be able to look into it mm -hmm. and then also go to the Senate. Mm -hmm. One of the elements you have addressed is the regulations. I've spoken about the policy document that is for fisheries policy and aquaculture policy. We have also de developing the blue economy strategy. So we have sorted the governance to ensure that there's no there's fair trade within the space. The second element in the value chain is the processing or rather the production. Production is either at the water bodies or through aquaculture. Within the water bodies, we are doing capacity building of the fisher folk. We are empowering them with the right fishing gear, mm. the right fishing vessels, and all the equipment they require to go either do extraction of the product. Okay. The other element within the aquaculture or mariculture, we are developing infrastructure. I've spoken about the infrastructure in Shimoni mm -hmm. that will deal with mariculture center of excellence. We are doing another one in the lake region. It's called Kabonyo. It will also help the fisher folk within the entire Luonyanza region and western region to give them quality feed and seed because that's one of the challenges within the aquaculture space. Mm -hmm. There's another one in Sagana to sort out the Mount Kenya region and the central region and the eastern region. With all those infrastructure that the government is developing within the next one year, we'll be able to provide quality seed to the aquaculture or the mariculture element within the fisheries sp space. I've spoken about the next element within the value chain, which is uh, the development of infrastructure also. Mm -hmm. That is the areas for processing. We are developing a fishery spot in Mombasa, another one in Kuale, in Shimoni, and also we are doing landing sites, five in the coastal region and nine in the lake region. Mm -hmm. In the coastal region, we, had already, we have already finished four sites, two in Kilifi and two in Kuale. Mm -hmm. Kuale, they're called Vanga and uh, Gazi. In Kilifi, it's Kichochakati and Gomeni. I've mentioned about the other five that we are developing yeah. through various partners. And then in the Lake region, we have already developed three. Mm -hmm. There's Sori in uh, Migori, mm -hmm. there's Mulkoba in uh, Busia, and there's Luanda Kokotieno in Siaya counties. Mm -hmm. Those ones are already developed. And remember, as I mentioned earlier, these are facilities that have cold storage, fish processing plant, ice making machine, water desalination, solar panels because of ensuring the energy consumption within the space, mm -hmm. offices, and also other elements that can help improve the shelf life of the fish. Mm -hmm. We are doing uh, Asat and Ogali in Kisumu. We are doing uh, Nyandiwa, Wakula in uh, Homabe. We are doing Kochalo in uh, Migori. We are doing Bumbe in uh, Busia, and we are doing Assembo and uh, Wichlum in Siaya. Mm. We are also developing others in Lake Trukana, in Lake Baringo, and Lake Naivasha. All these infrastructure projects will be done within one year. Okay. This will help the life shelf of the fish. Shelf so mm. fisher, fisher for community will not suffer the post harvest losses they have been suffering before. Mm. So they'll, they'll have their own space to dictate the price. Okay. Because if the product is still fresh, then you can decide. Mm -hmm. Another element, we have 45 uh, beach management units, groups across the country. We are converting these beach management units into cooperatives. And within that space, we'll be able to do a lot of capacity building so that they can run the enterprise within the fisheries as an enterprise, as a business. They can make money from that because mm. that is possible. Mm. And we have already converted over 149 out of the 445. Our target is by June this year, we should have an umbrella of fisheries cooperative. Mm -hmm. We want fisheries sector to be at the same space with the tea and coffee
factories and the milk and so on and so forth. Uh, yes, when you speak about this, you know, this great grandiose and plans that you yes. have as a docket, um, yes. you being the peers, they sound quite ambitious. Um, talk to us about the implementation, the practicability of, you know, all these, um, you know, fee, aquafish, um, these areas, these projects that you're going to uh, develop in, you know, Kirinyaga, rather in central, in Nyanza, in the coastal region, mm -hmm. about its efficacy and its, you know, practicability of implementation within the one year time frame that you have looking at now, March of 2025. Um, thank you, George. Uh, I know it looks like it's a dream, mm -hmm. but uh, this is something that is happening. Okay. His Excellency the President, uh, when we, we, we through his wisdom and he set up the State Department. And remember when he was doing the campaigns, he went around Kenya. And I'll focus mostly on the lake region and the Indian Ocean region, the coastal region. Yes. These are the things, these are the items, these are the asks that the fisher community asked. So when we were appointed, mm -hmm. The ball started rolling immediately. There was no time to snooze. Mm -hmm. So when I say these components and these projects will be done within the next one year, these are projects like the coast projects have already been procured. Mm -hmm. So we should be having contractors on board in the next uh, few weeks. Mm -hmm. The center of excellence in, the, in Kisumu, it was already groundbroken by the president. The one in Sagana, it's almost complete. The fish landing sites in uh, the lake region will be procuring in the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. So resources have been set aside. And remember, as I said, we are doing this with other development partners, the World Bank, mm -hmm. IFAD, and other partners. So the resources have already been secured. The financing agreements have already been agreed upon by the various development partners. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of plug and play. Mm -hmm. So it will happen. It will happen. Yes. Um, so when you look at, because the fish will come, of course, from the blue economy, um, that is the waters. Mm -hmm. How are we conserving these waters to be able to ensure mm -hmm. that we indeed, as a country, have enough resources, uh, fish stocks to be able, so that then you don't establish, you know, good landing sites, good uh, fisheries, good stocking places, mm -hmm. and then there is no f healthy fish uh, that is coming out from these areas. So uh, talk to us about even how sometimes you just go to um, normal uh, fisheries or, you know, mm -hmm. aquaculture, yes. uh, lakes, the stenches that emanate from their peers when you look at even how the management of, and you know how we conserve our maritime mm -hmm. uh, facilities, the waters to be specifically, mm -hmm. how are we working uh, to be able to ensure that indeed whatever comes out from inside there mm -hmm. is fit for consumption as in the, indeed also attracting and fetching a good price? Okay, thank you for that question. I'll start again with the element of regulation. Okay. We have developed a regulation called fish safety and quality. That regulation will ensure that the fish that we consume in our bodies mm -hmm. is safe and secure. We have an institution called Kenya Fisheries Service. This is a directorate that already exists. Okay. So when you're doing fisheries, whether you're doing it in the capture mm -hmm. or in aquaculture, you must get certification for this from the Kenya Fisheries Service. There's a whole directorate under that. And uh, within also that space, we have developed three labs, fisheries quality labs, mm -hmm. fish quality labs. There's one in Mombasa, there's one in Nairobi, mm -hmm. and there's one also in Kisumu. Yeah. So we're in the process to get uh, the certification of Kenas, mm -hmm. so that we ensure that these elements or this product, before it goes to the market, it's tested from any anti, you know, any bacteria infection mm -hmm. or fungal infection and so on and so forth, so that to ensure the product that reaches, reaches the market is mm -hmm. safe for human consumption. Mm -hmm. So we have put measures across. We have also, we are developing standard operating procedures for biosecurity within all that space. Mm -hmm. And also we have also plans to ensure we have also quarantine facilities within the border lines to ensure any fish product that comes into Kenya or leaves Kenya or any brood stock or any aspect within the sector is tested and given the certification. Mm. Currently, as we wait for the certification, 
ISO certification for the labs. We take our samples to CAPS, and also all the people who are working within the fisheries industry, that is from a commercial perspective, they also have to get that certification from CAPS mm -hmm. and from the fisheries department. Mm -hmm. So we have our whole body, which is a regulator that ensure mm -hmm. there's fish quality mm -hmm. and safety mm -hmm. within the country. Yeah, briefly, P.S., how lucrative is this industry for someone who wants to say, okay, uh, P.S. is talking about these grandiose plans that they are invent inventing as a government coming up with. Mm -hmm. I would like to invest. How lucrative is it? It is very lucrative. Mm -hmm. uh, we have various uh, commercial farmers. Look at Victory Farms. Mm -hmm. You just have to have the right mindset. Okay as government will give you a very conducive environment. Mm -hmm. The processing of getting this permit is very short. You can decide to do commercial aquaculture. Mm -hmm. You can decide to go do fishing in the deep sea, or you can do fishing in the lake. We'll just issue you with a permit. Of mm -hmm. course, after meeting all the required elements or filling all the forms, just make an application mm -hmm. to, to the Director General of Kenya Fishery Service. Uh -huh. And if you are able to meet all the standards that are required. You'll be given a permit if it's to fish in the deep sea, if it's to start a commercial aquaculture farmer, mm -hmm. and the profits are good. Brilliant. Yes. Of course, and on that note is where we want to take a short breather. Uh, before we continue this conversation, remember uh, we are talking about uh, scorecard on blue economy and fisheries with none other than P.S. Betsinjagi. She's the principal secretary in the department, State Department for uh, Blue Economy and Fisheries. That conversation with P.S. is coming back in a short while. I can see your feedback. Please keep it coming at TV47 News at George Maringa underscore on X formerly Twitter. Use the hashtag Hashtag daily report. Uh, her handle is at ps underscore betsy underscore njagi. Keep your feedback coming You're back in a few minutes. katika mfahamu kiongozi tutakuletea viongozi aina mbalimbali mbali. nilikuwa na nisani kama kumi mm -hmm. na pia nilikuwa nimenua mini bus mini bus niko niwa mm -hmm. kushinda unaangalia simu ya mzee soma biblia ama ingia kwa washroom ujisuke <coughs> eh, mpaka nimeletoa <laughs> hivi i don't know whether any of my children would want to get into the political field sijajua bado kila alhamisi saa moja nusu kuendelea Join us on a journey through the concrete jungles and rising skylines where every beam, every nail tells a story of progress and vision. In every aspect of life, you know, you have to look at several dynamics. From groundbreaking... Nowadays with the tech, uh, you can check on different websites uh, or, or you check uh, online and you can see some inspiration. So at least that one would be a direction already. I'll know like what kind of style you, you're going for. To finishing touches, witness the dedication of the hard-working teams who bring these ambitious dreams to reality. The Realtor, Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. katika mfahamu kiongozi tutakuletea viongozi aina mbalimbali nilikuwa na nisani kama kumi mm -hmm. na pia nilikuwa nimenua mini bus mini bus niko niwa mm -hmm. kushinda unaangalia simu ya mzee soma biblia ama ingia kwa washroom 
I don't know whether any of my children. <laughs> Absolutely. It is four minutes past 10 o'clock right here on TV 47. We thank you for staying with us as we take a scorecard a look um, as we take a binoculars and delve into the waters of the country with P.S. Betsinjage. She is the Principal Secretary uh, for Blue Economy and Fisheries. You were talking earlier on about how lucrative this industry is. Um, Looking at young people, especially in these regions that you talk about, do you think there is an uptick of being able to venture? Because um, whereas people have been, you know, young people have been urged to explore farming, how is the uptick, I wonder, on matters, uh, blue economy and, you know, fishing as well? The uptick is quite good. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'll mention of a specific case whereby uh, we'll dive in into the Kenya Fishery School. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have a Kenya Fishery Schools in Sagana. Yes. The school, we have already gotten a, a certification from the TVET institution mm -hmm. to be able to make it more accommodative mm -hmm. for even the youths within that space. Mm -hmm. In this space, you'll be able to learn about uh, fishing and you'll be able to also learn about uh, aquaculture. Mm -hmm. One of the components that the youth also can uh, dive in is the element of archeries. We have already certified over 80 archeries across the country. Mm -hmm. This is areas whereby you can be able to sell the broodstock. Yeah. That is the fingerlings that you can be able to use. Broodstock is the? The broodstock is the, the fingerlings, the basically. Fingerlings. The ah, fingerlings okay. that you can be able to use in the aquaculture business. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you can either venture in a archery owner whereby you can be supplying fingerlings to the farmers. Mm -hmm. That's one of the areas you can be able to look into. Mm -hmm. You can also venture into aquaponics, whereby aquaponics is whereby you do aquaculture, but the water that you use can be used in hydroponics, that is vegetables or vegetation and so on. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that we have already been able to do research on, mm -hmm. and they have been very successful. So to the youth of this country, Fishing is a very big business, mm -hmm. and they can be able to explore that. Mm -hmm. And the centers of excellence that I mentioned, that will be complete in the next one year, mm -hmm. especially for the one in Kisumu and the one in uh, Kuala Shimoni, will be able to enroll our youths, or anybody who is interested within the fisheries sector, to yes. be able to learn a lot about this business. Mm. So that either you can do it either at home for home consumption, or you can do it as a small scale, mm -hmm. and so on and uh, so forth. We also have a program that we focus basically on the youths. There's a program we are doing with uh, aquaculture business development, that is IFAT, and this program covers 15 counties mm -hmm. in the Luo Nyanza region and Western, mm -hmm. and also in the Eastern and Central region. We have been able to train very many youths and very many young, also women, and also people with disability yeah. in the fishery sector. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's also another program that is funded by World Bank. We are also training and doing capacity building within the space of the coastal region. Mm -hmm. This program, we have trained over 20,000 groups of people that have also benefited mm -hmm. from even grants to start business within the aquaculture space mm -hmm. or the fishery space. And you remember I mentioned that uh, His Excellency the President was able to issue mm -hmm. grants worth 1.5 billion mm -hmm. last year to these groups. This year we'll also be issuing other grants mm -hmm. to these groups mm -hmm. and also we'll be issuing grants to also groups within also the Lake region, the mm -hmm. Mount Kenya region, the Eastern region. All we need to do as the youth of this country, mm -hmm. all entrepreneurs who want to do aquaculture or fish farming, I just write proposals and you'll receive a grant. Mm. Yes. Okay. Um, the uh, component of Blue Economy, of course, earlier on, uh, you had mentioned tourism, culture, and leisure. Mm -hmm. Talk to us now about the aspect, this aspect of tourism, mm -hmm. um, culture, and leisure. In a nutshell, what, what does it entail in terms of exploring? Of course, there is the um, issue of the tourists we've seen and talked about, but um, demystify that for us and the opportunities that lie, especially for the youth as well. 
Okay, thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. Look at it like this. You'd love to take a cruise from Mombasa to Lamu or to Kilifi. Yes. That is one venture within the blue space. Oh. That is tourism. Mm. You just take a cruise for a number of days. Instead of all the time people driving from uh, Mombasa to Malindi mm. or to Diani, mm -hmm. take a cruise. So these are the components within the blue space we can be able to explore. Mm. The sports fishing. It's very, very high in the county of Lamu. Mm -hmm. They, are, they do spot fishing whereby a group of fishermen in various uh, boats, they, they just compete and they bring their catch and they sell within that community. And it's very, very recruitive. They even catch the legs of tuna within that space. So it's quite interesting. Look at uh, various restaurants that have been built within the mangrove space in Kilifi, mm. in Lamu. That is blue economy and it's tourism. And they have been generating a lot of capital mm. and a lot of employment and grants and also support from the community and also international markets. Market, tourists, yes. tourists really love going to those spaces. Mm -hmm. So those are the elements that within the tourism space we can be able to explore. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be going all the time to, to sleep in uh, the island hotels in Mombasa. Just tour the coastal region, tour the lake region, mm -hmm. take a cruise from uh, Kisumu to Oma Bay mm -hmm. and enjoy the scenery. And enjoy the scenery. Yes. Do, do, do you think it is um, our facilities are attractive enough to the public to be able to explore this? Yes, absolutely. Uh -huh. Yes. And what are you doing to perhaps develop the, you know, the to be able to enable even private investors then invest in these getting boats mm -hmm. uh, to be able to get even, you know, perhaps mm -hmm. bigger vessels mm -hmm. to explore the oceans and also to explore the lakes. Okay. Mm. First of all, to explore the blue economy space, one of the components we are doing, we are coming up with a blue economy strategy, which we should launch in, within the next three months. Okay. This strategy will be able to guide even the investors across the globe, either locally, mm -hmm. regionally, or international. They'll be able to check which components within the blue space can they invest in. Is it tourism? Is it uh, fishing? Is it maritime transport? Mm -hmm. And so on and so forth. However, also we are also developing a marine spatial plan within the Indian Ocean and the Lake region. Mm -hmm. The two spatial plans were passed two weeks ago by the cabinet. Okay. This spatial plan is basically trying to show which areas you can come invest in the Indian Ocean, mm -hmm. which areas you can be able to invest within the Lake region. Mm -hmm. Is it in energy? Is it in fisheries? Is it in aquaculture? Mm -hmm. There's a role of potential in aquaculture, for example, within the two regions. Mm -hmm. And also, we have developed management plans in Lake Trukana, and we are developing others in Nakuru, and also in Baringo, and also in Naivasha. Mm -hmm. So when you have a good strategy and a good spatial plan, an investor can come knocking anytime. Mm -hmm. An investor can be anybody. It can be local, regional, or international. Mm. And of course, all this encompasses and we focus on also the fisher community. Mm -hmm. So this partial plan is very clear which are the areas, potential areas for aquaculture or cage farming, which are the potential area for tourism, maritime transport, mm -hmm. fishery sector, and all those components are taken care of. Mm -hmm. Looking at the Kenyan situation, P.S., um, what are some of the subsidies that are perhaps contributing to overfishing in our lakes and oceans? Okay, when you look at uh, the Kenyan space, mm -hmm. I'll start with the global space. Yes. When you look at the global space, in most countries within the European or other regions, mm -hmm. they're given subsidies also for like uh, the ships and the vessels that go do deep sea fishing. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, this is something we want to look into. Because when, they are given, when you give so much subsidy in that space, again, you create an element of a fishing. Within the Indian Ocean or the Kenya territorial waters, we have not experienced a lot of interest within the commercial fleet. We have at least seven. 20 commercial fleet. Mm -hmm. Our plan for development the fleet is around 73. Mm -hmm. That is a fleet uh, management plan. We have 20 currently that uh, we have licensed. Mm -hmm. 
So our resources within the deep sea, they are not overexploited or overfishing. But as a country, mm. we want to empower the fisher community so that okay. they can also go offshore. What are we doing about it? We are giving them and supporting them on the right fishing gears and the right methods. Mm -hmm. And also doing capacity building within that space. Mm. But we must ensure that we protect the breeding grounds for the fisheries. I mentioned earlier we have a marine research institute that ensures we have demarcated areas and train our people and do research on the fish stocks within mm. our EEZ. Mm. So that challenge of overfishing within the Kenyan space we have not really experienced it, okay. but it's something that can really create a global challenge mm -hmm. within the space. Mm -hmm. So it's something we are really looking into and we are working closely with other bodies to mm -hmm. ensure that it's, uh, it's looked into. Mm. Um, when you look at the conservation of the marine areas and especially not only in the coast, but looking at how the water bodies, mm -hmm. if you could call it so, mm -hmm. have been diminishing. Some areas you go to, of course, due to climate change, you will hear there used to be a river here, it no longer flows. Mm -hmm. um, there used to be a lake here, it's, you know, has reduced into a swamp mm -hmm. and now it's dry land. How affected, if you could demystify, has the maritime space and the water bodies and the blue economy space been affected by, uh, you know, the climate change and the climate change conversation? And how perhaps are you mitigating to ensure that whereas you are losing X uh, percentage, we are also rebuilding and trying to restore another X percentage? Yes, of course, uh, climate change has affected the global yeah. space and also it has affected Kenya. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, the coastal region, for example, mm. the issue of mangroves, there's been a, a lot of uh, mangrove trees being cut mm -hmm. by the fisher community. And why are they doing this? It's because they need firewood mm. so that they can be able to, you know, provide food on the table. Yes. So how can we ensure that uh, we do capacity building, which mm. we are doing, mm. and show them the importance of these mangroves? Mangroves are the breeding grounds for the fish. The fishes. So if we cut, then we'll deplete the stock. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing as a government is to sensitize the fisher community, the importance of, of course, uh, planting trees, which is also mangroves, which covers that space, mm -hmm. and the conservation of it. As much as we require this uh, firewood, how can we do it sustainably? Remember when we did the introduction, you can exploit the resources within the blue space, but sustainably. sustainably. So that's the component we are looking at. We are also looking at also coral reef restoration. Mm. The coral reef is usually damaged by vessels like the trawlers that come and just damage the ground of the, or rather the seabed yeah, yeah. of the ocean. Mm. So we ensure that we regulate that space. If it's a trawler, they cannot come and do fishing onshore. They have to do it a bit offshore. Mm -hmm. So those are the areas or the elements we are looking into. Mm. We have put regulations in place. I mentioned earlier we have a regulator, which is Kenya Fisheries Service, that ensures all those components are adhered to. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we sensitize our communities to mm -hmm. ensure that they protect the resources, because we need these resources as food security and also as revenue generating. Mm -hmm. So these are the areas we are looking at as government, mm -hmm. and we continue doing it. It's a continuous process. It's not something that will come to an end, but we have to continue doing it. Mm -hmm. And in return, we ensure that the communities are also benefiting mm -hmm. and showing them the importance of conservation of our environment. Mm. Yes. The extractive industries is also a component of, you know, a core component of the blue economy. Mm. Like talk, talk, talk to us about what exists so far in terms of extractive industries mm -hmm. and what potential perhaps there, there, there is therein. Yes, if you look at uh, the extractive industry, mm. when these big ships uh, sail, mm -hmm. and if you see them being uh, taken for dry docking or for maintenance, you'll see they have a sort of algae, like a green, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. material around it. Mm. But uh, one of the components that uh, our research institute is doing is to see how we can be able to protect the seabed. 
One of the research elements they have done, it's still at a research level, is to come up with components that they, they have done some research on and can be able to produce or manufacture paint that you can use to paint on the vessels. Mm -hmm. This paint does not affect the seabed, does not take away the algae within the seabed of the ocean. So these are still on research level. We are also doing a, a bit of water desalination, whereby we ensure that the water, we can be able to ensure the water that is in the ocean or in the lakes can be used also for human consumption. So they are still at research level, but these are the components we are trying to look into and uh, explore the blue space at a wider mm. scope, yes. A wider scope. Uh, are we going to see perhaps in the next, you know, three, um, two years uh, that you'll be able to have these extractive industries more on a large scale? Yes, we should. Mm -hmm. We should. Really? The research team is working very hard to ensure we look at those components within mm -hmm. the biotechnology, bioprospecting, mm -hmm. the minerals, all the extractive industries. And then with that research, we'll be able to share that information mm -hmm. with prospective uh, investors and we can be able to, you know, explore mm. that space. Further. What is the international community saying when you assess our blue economy uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. as well as our territorial uh, waters? Mm -hmm. what, are, what is the international community saying? Are we putting ourselves out there attractive enough mm -hmm. for not only local investors but also international investors to be able to come and say, okay, we see potential over there mm -hmm. and we're going to tap in over there. In as much as we see, you know, these bilateral talks that keep going on, mm -hmm. does blue economy feature? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the components we have done, we have signed a um, memorandum of understanding with mm -hmm. various uh, international countries. Yes, yes. We are also in the process of uh, signing other MOUs, for example, with the government of Korea, mm -hmm. Norway, and so on, and uh, others. We are also developing the blue economy strategy that I mentioned earlier, and also, which is also something that is coming up soon in the next uh, few months, we are having a blue investment forum partnered with the European Union, mm -hmm. together with the government of Kenya, mm -hmm. in the next coming months. So we'll be able to bring investors within the blue space across the globe, mm -hmm. and we'll be able to pitch to them what the blue economy is all about in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And that way we can be able to get a lot of uh, investors in Kenya so that they can be able to also assist and support the fisher community one. Mm -hmm. They can be able to bring their money within their blue space. Mm -hmm. And also, we can be able to see how we can be able to trade together. The other day, His Excellency the President signed an EPA agreement with the European Union. That's one step mm -hmm. of ensuring, and fisheries is covered in that EPA agreement. Mm. So we are trying to explore all those uh, opportunities. We are also working with the US government to see how we can explore this opportunity mm -hmm. by you know, working with various uh, private sector mm -hmm. within the mariculture, space. Mm. We're also working with the government of Japan. Yes. So we are open to work with everybody across the globe. Mm -hmm. We are working with the local investors. We're also working with the local communities. Mm. There's enough space for everybody. Mm -hmm. And all that, of course, ensures job creation, mm -hmm. food security, and of course, uh, revenue generation. Mm -hmm. Yes, and Re foreign exchange, of course. Okay. Um, looking at, you know, I gather that poaching does not only happen in wildlife, yes. uh, in terms of, you know, what is on land, mm -hmm. but it also happens on sea. Mm -hmm. And some of the creatures or species that have been affected is a certain type of turtle. Mm. Um, talk to us about how then, as a government, you're enforcing to be able to ensure, because we've seen communities mm -hmm. uh, that go ahead and trap these uh, turtles to be able to extract some type of oil mm. that fetches you know, some figures in the black market. Um, and of course, it's mythical that you know they have certain benefits. Mm. When you look at that type of you know poaching and that type of um, misusement of of the marine life, mm -hmm. uh, what as a government are you doing, especially to be able to safeguard uh, the lives and the species that are endangered? Okay, one of the things we are doing, we have developed two action plans as the government of Kenya. Mm -hmm. 
One of them is called the National Plan of Action for Turtles and Seabirds. Mm -hmm. The other one is National Plan of Action for Sharks. Mm -hmm. So with these action plans, these are instruments that ensure that within the industry that it's regulated mm -hmm. and there's no illegal activities within the blue space. We also have a monitoring control and surveillance center that sits in Mombasa. We are able to monitor our waters. We have a very vibrant Kenya Coast Guard and Kenya Fisheries Service. Mm -hmm. They do patrols to ensure there is no illegal activities within the blue space, mm -hmm. be it illegal fishing, be it matters to do with security. And also, these services are also offered in the other water bodies mm -hmm. so that we ensure that our blue spaces are well protected. And they do patrols, they do checks, they do arrest mm -hmm. if there's any illegal activities. And of course, if there's a case, there's the regulation to guide mm -hmm. and ensure that this does not happen. Mm -hmm. But the plan of action, especially for the turtles, for the seabirds and for the sharks mm -hmm. is already developed, mm -hmm. awaiting now publication. Publication. Yes. Oh, okay. Still staying in, you know, you mentioned sharks and all. Um, the dolphins that and the, uh, you know, types of whales that keep uh, the species yes. that visits the ocean. Yes. Um, are we really tapping into it as a country to be able to say, okay, during this time of the year, is, is, is it around June? Yes. Between June to August? Yes. The pups will be able to go down there and be able to see these um, f species of animals as they migrate and move to mm. be able to just go there and experience. How, uh, you know, is, is, is there uptake by Kenyans, really? Of course, there's a lot of uptake, and uh, we're working very closely with the State Department for Tourism yeah. to, div to work and ensure we sensitize. Because if you go to the coastal uh, hotels, mm -hmm. like if you go to Atamu uh, in uh, or Malindi or Kuale, you'll be able to be given that information at those hotels. So we'll continue sensitizing Kenyans mm -hmm. and across the globe mm -hmm. to ensure we show them the beauty of Kenyan uh, oceans. Oceans, yes. brilliant. Um, and how about then the safeguarding of the areas that perhaps, um, because there were places that have had overfishing, mm -hmm. and then we've seen communities mm -hmm. as um, sensitizing around themselves and saying, just like paddocking, mm -hmm. so you will not fish in that region for a while to allow the fish stocks to breed, mm -hmm. then give it a while, a month or two or even three months to be able to then move that. Um, there seems to be, last, the, the previous years, there has been low government intervention, if I could put it, mm -hmm. and communities have had to partner with development partners or community conservancies. Mm -hmm. Is it something that the government will perhaps take up and say, okay, fine, there seems to be potential in this, let's take it? Actually, George, yeah. uh, we have joint co-management areas that okay. we have already mapped out mm -hmm. with the communities themselves. Okay. And as a government, we have sat down with them. We have agreed these are the joint co-management areas that they're supposed to conserve and mm -hmm. protect to ensure that there's a lot of uh, sustainability within mm -hmm. that space. Mm -hmm. And uh, the community have really embraced it. They are the champions. As government, we are providing them with all the tools. Mm -hmm to ensure that they're able even to communicate or share information if there's a challenge within that space. Mm -hmm. We have even provided them with boats. They can be able to even patrol those areas. Our beach management units, that is the Fisher for Community, they are very passionate about protecting those areas. And these uh, elements within the joint core management areas, we have also formed a beach management unit regulation mm -hmm. that is supposed to regulate how activities within the BMUs mm -hmm. is conducted. Mm -hmm. So the government is very passionate about that. Mm -hmm. The community is very passionate about that. And I also want to thank uh, the county government, the governors of the coastal counties, the governors of the lake region, and the other governors in Western. They are very passionate and key about this space. Mm -hmm. So every other minute, or other day, we have interactions with them. Mm -hmm. And we ensure that we capacity building, we work together with the county government and national government, mm -hmm. so that we can be able to ensure this sector is well aligned. Mm -hmm. And 
we are doing the right thing. Our focus and vision is the same mm -hmm. as one government. Remember, Anjuko does not know county in a national government. Mm -hmm. Yes, they know Serikali. Serikali. <laughs> yes. Um, as we look at the f consumption of fish, which of course, and other rather, uh, you know, marine life, if you could call it. Mm -hmm. Are Kenyans, uh, you know, consuming as much fish as you would expect? Is the market widening or is it stagnant when you look at the market dynamics? The consumption of fish in Kenya is around 3.5 to 4 kg per capita income. Mm -hmm. But uh, Africa, is, we should be at 10 and globally we should be at 20. So we are at 50 percent. Mm -hmm. So Kenyans are not consuming fish as much as we should. Mm -hmm. But this is something that also we are looking into uh, as a government. Uh, we have an organization called Kenya Fish Marketing Authority. We are trying to look at where are the gaps, what can we do about it? And one of the elements we found are the gaps is the value chain I was addressing. Yes. When we do it right at the value chain, which we are doing, already on the processing, which basically ensures everything works well. Mm -hmm. We should be able to see the consumption of fish grow. Because Kenyans want to know where to find this fish. Mm -hmm. They want to know the fish that I'm buying, is it safe for consumption? Where can I get it mm -hmm. as a quick shop? Mm -hmm. So these are the aspects we are addressing within the value chain mm -hmm. and you should be able to ensure through the authority we are able to share this information, market this information, so that we can increase our consumption. Mm. It's actually below 50%. Yes, yeah, it's a 50 percent. Um, what do you think it, that perhaps we will be able to see at, a, at some point where you know whichever fish stocks or which of whichever breed of fish mm -hmm. uh, one chooses to consume, mm -hmm. then then that then. Of course, tilapia seems to be topping the, yes. and, and then followed, I think, by omena or something. Yes. Uh, when you look at the varieties that we have and value addition, mm -hmm. is there some? Is that something that should be as lucrative to be able to attract uh, Kenyans to say, okay, fine, we, it's not just about eating fish as we are used to, mm -hmm. and making it look like a ceremony, like you know, when there is nyamachoma and everything else, to be able to have value addition with, um, on fish. Is that something that perhaps that you're considering? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. that's something actually we are doing uh, as a state department. Remember I told you we have a uh, center in Sagana mm -hmm. that is still active. Mm -hmm. We have a center in Kiganjo that does trout farming. And when you go to those two centers, you'll find value addition on the fish products. You'll mm. get fish samosas, you'll get fish sausages, and other products within the fish sector. Mm -hmm. So these products are already within the market. And what we are doing now is to bring other components or other players within the fisheries industry mm -hmm. to be able to show them how it can, it's mm -hmm. easy to be done. Mm -hmm. Because there are people who request for fish samosas or fish sausages. But mm -hmm. that is already happening. Mm -hmm. So we are working towards scaling it up. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK, brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, P.S. there is, seems to be feedback. Um, someone is saying they're watching us from China. Please uh, channel your question to Madam Pierce right here. We are due for another short break. When we come back, we now enter the home stretch of the conversation, looking now into the future. Um, my guest will still here be in studio. Do stay with us and keep your feedback coming. katika mfahamu kiongozi tutakuletea viongozi aina mbalimbali nilikuwa na nisani kama kumi na pia nilikuwa nimenua mini bus mini bus ni koniwa kushinda unaangalia simu ya mzee soma biblia ama ingia kwa washroom kujisuka mpaka nimeletoa hii i don't know whether any of my children would want to get into the political field sijajua bado kila alhamisi pamoja nusu kuendelea jo 
join us on a journey through the concrete jungles and rising skylines where every beam, every nail tells a story of progress and vision. In every aspect of life, you know, you have to look at several dynamics. From groundbreaking. Now it is with the tech, uh, you can check on different websites uh, or, or you check uh, online and you can see some inspiration. So at least that one would be a direction already. I'll know like what kind of style you, you're going for. To finishing touches, witness the dedication of the hardworking teams who bring these ambitious dreams to reality. The Realtor, Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. For staying with us, you're watching the Daily Report right here on TV 47, the home of untold stories. I'm still with P.S. Uh, Betsy Njagi, the Principal Secretary, uh, Blue Economy and Fisheries. Let's talk about the areas that are far flung, uh, Lake Turkana and the, and the likes. When you look at the fish that comes from that area, communities have not really seemed to benefit from um, the, inf the aquaculture. The marine life that is existent in these places. And it seems to really have some good products. Uh, how then do you tap out and to be able to help such people to also not just focus on pastoralism, mm -hmm. but also fishing and also encourage them? Because they have quite some huge fish stock, I think, um, by according to the numbers that we see. Uh, thank you, George. Um, lake Trukana, it's a fisheries uh, lake, yeah. which is having a lot of potential. Mm. The kind of species that you find there, the most famous one is called mango tilapia. And they export it to the DRC, Congo, as dried fish. Mm. That's what the Congo people love. So there's a big market mm -hmm. of that uh, species mm -hmm. in the DRC. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges the lake has faced, and we're addressing them as government, is uh, facilities. And this facility, remember, one of the species within Lake Trukana, mm -hmm. they like it dried. So we have a two-front facility. Yeah. We'll develop a two-front facility, whereby there's cold storage mm -hmm. and there's dried fish. Mm. This facility will help the fisher community within Lake Victoria mm -hmm. to have their product conserved well mm -hmm. and also processed. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. they lack processing facilities. So we'll be doing uh, two facilities at the landing sites, mm -hmm. on the Marsabit side and also on the Turkana side. Mm -hmm. Remember, the lake covers the two, the two counties. Mm -hmm. Another thing we have developed and we are working closely with the county government is the Lake Turkana Management Plan. Mm -hmm. This management plan will be able to assist the fisher community in the exploitation of these resources. Mm -hmm will be able to know which are the areas for breeding, how they are going to carry out the business within the lake and other activities within the lake region. Mm -hmm. And also we are doing a feasibility study to understand the stock assessment within the lake. Yeah. This feasibility study, we have gotten a lot of interest from various uh, governments, mm -hmm. like the government of uh, the Kingdom of Netherlands, mm -hmm. They are funding us, uh, uh, government of Kenya, to do stock assessment and feasibility study. We should be able to have that feasibility study sometime this year. Mm -hmm. It will be able to show the potential of this lake. Mm -hmm. We have already done some research on the same, and we have seen it's a high potential lake in the fishery sector. But we want to dig deeper and see what else, so that we can also attract other investors. Mm -hmm. We'll also be doing some solar panels uh, infrastructure that is being funded by various partners within that space. Mm -hmm. So we are supporting the Lake Trukana community, mm -hmm. the Fisher community, 
so that we can be able to spur the growth there. Mm. Because currently it's very good. Mm -hmm. They have a big market, mm -hmm. so we need to ensure that we grow that sector. Okay. How clean are our oceans and lakes mm -hmm. in terms of if you visit other countries, mm -hmm. you're able to see, I mean, their ocean water, I mean, their lake water is quite crisp, it's quite clear. Mm -hmm. But you come to our continent, especially our country, we mm -hmm. seem to be polluting our waters a lot, our marine life a lot. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the cleanliness levels, and not only for optics, but also um, the health and the hygiene. Well, whereas you spoke about how you're able to mm. clean up, mm -hmm. uh, how is that coming up to be able to just ensure that, oh well, mm, when you're close to a fish or rather a water body, mm -hmm. you'll be able or you will be assured that it's not a place that you will fear going back next mm. time because of how you've seen the situation looking like. Okay, thank you. Um, we are looking at uh, the marine pollution as something that affects across the globe. Mm -hmm. And uh, we cannot say Kenya is not polluted mm -hmm. in the marine space, yes. be it the lake or the Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. One of the components we are working with closely with the, my sister department, which is the State Department for Maritime Affairs mm -hmm. and Shipping, and also the State Department for Tourism, mm -hmm. is to look at the entire space of maritime pollution or marine pollution. And we are, the shipping and maritime department is looking at various regulations to ensure that the maritime sector or the maritime affairs is well protected, mm -hmm. to ensure there's no pollution. Because pollution can also be from emissions of the vessels, the ships that yes. come. Mm -hmm. So there's also, we are also looking at the green energy. How can we ensure the vessels that come within our space mm -hmm. adhere to the marine ecosystem mm -hmm. and also to ensure that there's a lot of conservation. Mm -hmm. There's the issue of litter. We have a program that uh, we are working closely with the State Department for Maritime on glow litter mm -hmm. to sensitize the community on not polluting the marine environment with plastic. And this program will assist in doing recycling of the plastic mm -hmm. in the marine space and also we're also working closely with the county government to ensure the water that comes from either from various infrastructure projects or water sewerages, they don't, you know, deliver the waste into the, in the, in the marine spaces. Mm -hmm. So this is more of a multi-agency that we are working closely with various uh, departments, mm -hmm. with county government, with NEMA to ensure that that is not done. Mm -hmm. Uh, you presented the budget uh, uh, policy statement yes. to the departmental committee. Mm -hmm. um, what budget allocation are you looking at, um, especially in the coming financial year? And uh, apart from the projects that you mentioned, would you perhaps tell us the priority that in terms of hierarchy that you'd be looking at to ensure that um, as you ask for this money, mm -hmm. uh, you are prioritizing ABCD? Thank you for that. Uh, we are looking at a very high budget, mm -hmm. but uh, of course uh, we have to look at the fiscal space. Our ceiling is uh, 10 billion, mm -hmm. uh, the State Department, of which uh, 6 billion, 6.5 billion should be development, and uh, 3.5 is recurrent. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the development budget, as I mentioned earlier, we have two programs that uh, we are running in the State Department. There's a project we are doing with World Bank that covers uh, the coastal region or the coastal counties, mm -hmm. and the other one doing with the uh, IFAT and covers 15 counties. So out of the 6.5 billion of development budget, the budget that is within the State Department is around 1.5 billion. Mm -hmm. The 5 billion is for development or development partners budget. Okay. So within the development partners budget, we are developing infrastructure. The infrastructure I mentioned to you, uh, that is close to four billion. And the rest of the money, we are also working with various communities to give them grants, support in the fisher industry. Mm. And then within the State Department, we are developing also other infrastructure. I mentioned uh, about the infrastructure within uh, Lake Trukana, <laughs> Lake Baringo, and uh, Lake Naivasha. And we are also developing the ports. 
in Mombasa, mm -hmm. the fisheries port in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. So these are the priority areas mm -hmm. we are looking at. Mm -hmm. We are also doing a lot of capacity building, also for the training of our fisher folk. We have trained 880 fisher folk mm -hmm. to go and work in the deep sea vessels across uh, the continent. Mm. So that's part of also of facilitation we are doing within the State Department. Okay. So those are our key priorities and uh, we are very focused mm. and uh, to ensure that uh, we deliver them. Mm. Mm. I want us now to enter the home stretch of this conversation and let's look at the um, potential, the blue economy potential, because mm. it is in billions of Kenya shillings. Mm. When you look at uh, fisheries and aquaculture, mm -hmm. 48.8 billion shillings. Mm. How then do you think that the Kenyan population can be able mm -hmm. uh, to tap in to ensure that fine, um, in as much as the, there are these facilities that will be constructed, mm -hmm. um, at a personal level, uh, these are the funds that someone can you know, start with and be able to explore and then go ahead and tap into the 48.5 billion shillings okay. uh, fish, fisheries and aquaculture sector. Mm. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, when you look at the aquaculture space, mm -hmm. all the fishery space, those two programs I've mentioned to you, mm. this, they are also grants that uh, we are issuing to, to ensure we grow the people at the bottom of the pyramid yes. to get access to those grant all the facility to mm -hmm. enable them boost in this sector. Mm -hmm. The other element, especially in aquaculture, is mm -hmm. to ensure that we have quality seed and quality feed mm -hmm. and affordable. So with the centers of excellence that I mentioned in the region, mm -hmm. in Kisumu and uh, Kuala and also Sagana, these centers of region, they will be able to provide quality seed and also provide also solutions for quality feed mm -hmm. so that people can be able to tap into that. Mm -hmm. We also have grants that uh, our women can apply. We have a grant uh, with the Canadian government of around one billion mm -hmm. that women in blue economy can apply across the 11 counties, five counties in the lake and there are five counties in the, in the mm -hmm six counties in the Indian Ocean. Mm. So there are a lot of resources within this space and our teams can be able to support the fisher community. We continue doing capacity building, sensitizing them so that they can apply for this facility so that they can be able to do entrepreneurship mm -hmm. work within the fishery sector. Okay. Yes. Um, the, you, you, it's interesting you mentioned the blue economy and women. Uh, we've seen that the, some parts of this country have fallen victim to scenarios where uh, women pay for, uh, you know, fishing or, you know, through, through other method, methods uh, you know, that are quite unfriendly. I'm sure you know what I'm talking yes. about. Uh, first of all, what's your opinion about that? Because um, sensitizing women uh, and to be able, because they are also running these households. Mm -hmm. When you look at how the numbers are growing mm -hmm. and the risks that are involved. Mm -hmm. Do you think that perhaps the, someone is listening and be able to hear their call uh, to be able to just ensure that they abandon that because a lot of trading mm -hmm. um, to be able to afford mm -hmm. or to pay for fish mm -hmm. to feed their families. Mm -hmm. Yet, you look on the other side, mm -hmm. it seems to be lucrative. Where is the imbalance especially for women in your view? Of course, uh, George, it's very sad and unfortunate, but uh, we are listening, all of us. We are listening as a government, I'm listening as a woman, mm -hmm. and many other people within this space are listening. And uh, what we are doing closely with all the players, because this is a conversation that we need to have and we need to continue having as government, mm -hmm. as private sector, as developing pa partners, county government, even you, you have a sister, you have a brother or a cousin, mm -hmm. you know. So this is a conversation we need to have as Kenyans. And this is a conversation we are having. We cannot give up on that. So what we are doing as a state department is to continue capacity building these women. How do we do it? Of course, you will take them and teach them on other methods of doing business mm -hmm. other than that. Number two, we give them the facility. This grant, I'll tell you of two groups, there's Rio Fish mm -hmm. that earned 56 million from that grant. Mm -hmm. And that group was able to now grow and bring other women within that space. 
So there are good examples out there. So we can just continue sensitizing them. There are so many programs that are supporting women in this blue economy space. And also there are also other programs that are supporting women across the country. Mm -hmm. It's not only in blue economy. I'm sure these activities and these not so good activities that are pushing our women or our mothers, our sisters into these desperate measures, they are cutting across the entire industry. Mm -hmm. But as Kenyans, we need to take the initiative to continue supporting them in resources and information. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we'll be able to have a breakthrough on that. Mm -hmm. Does the industry, the blue economy uh, industry, fall uh, victim into contraband uh, materials and contraband fish as well? And <laughs> no, we don't have contraband mm -hmm. material, but uh, we have uh, contraband. I wouldn't call it contraband, mm -hmm. it's just illegal fishing gears, yeah. the fishing nets. Okay. And these are the fishing nets that also affect the fish stocks. And uh, the small, you know, fish species that are not even grown. Mm -hmm. The nets that are used, the monophenolin, that are used for fishing. Those are some of the illegal gears mm -hmm. that uh, sometimes uh, our fisher community use but we are working very closely with the county and of course the beach management units they are very strict on that mm -hmm. because they know the repercussion of using the wrong fishing gears mm -hmm. but we keep sensitizing them we keep talking to them we want to work together with them to see how we can ensure the right gears are in kenya mm -hmm. and the right gears are used for fishing mm -hmm. what is the future especially on the logistics and maritime transport is that has a potential of 73 billion shillings. I mean, are, are the companies that, and the mm -hmm. population of people that are taking up this more of Kenyans or are we seeing foreign investors more? It's a mix of both. Okay. And uh, one of the key elements that uh, the ministry is doing through the State Department of Shipping is introducing the cabotage law. Mm -hmm. Cabotage law is whereby once the goods are landed at the port of Mombasa, you don't have to use road transport or train transport to take the goods maybe to Malindi or to Lamo. Mm. They can be able to use other vessels within that space to do local transshipment. Mm. So that's one of the elements we are trying to grow the industry. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at them, the biggest uh, vessels within the shipping industry, the cargo vessels, yeah. they are more international vessels. But this cabotage law will be able to at least create opportunities mm -hmm. for any local entrepreneur to be able to transport those goods even by sea. You don't have to do it by road. Mm -hmm. There should be options. So those are some of the initiatives mm -hmm. the State Department is also doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and looking at now the extractive industries, you talked about the laws that you're also passing to be mm -hmm. able to ensure mm -hmm. that this happens. What, what is the future of that as well? That is a very bright future. Mm -hmm. But remember, when you look at the seabed, it's something as a country and also at the global space, it's something we need further studies, further exploitation, mm -hmm. information, be before we venture into it full swing. One of the things we are doing, we develop first the marine special plan. We identify the areas we can have extractive industries, or rather we can have uh, minerals uh, within the seabed. Then from that conversation, we should be able also to develop tools or instrument and deposit like a sustainable ocean plan, which we are working with the various uh, institutions to develop one. Mm -hmm. This sustainable ocean plan, His Excellency the President sits at the global level of the high level panel for oceans to ensure a sustainable ocean plan. Mm -hmm. So we are developing that as a government of Kenya mm -hmm. within the, the globe. With that, we can be able to say, how can we be able to exploit the minerals within the seabed mm. within a sustainable way? But before that, we need to develop a plan. Mm. We need to continue doing research so that we can speak from an informed position, mm. yes. And Blue Economy, of course, takes the bigger chunk of 480 billion in terms yes. of potential. <laughs> yes. Um, talk to Kenyans, uh, and I mean, talk to us about the value chain that perhaps Kenyans can start and say, okay, fine, mm -hmm. 480 billion is not a small amount, mm -hmm. but we seem not to be tapping it mm -hmm. as it were. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, uh, remember, as I mentioned earlier, 
As Kenyan government, uh, Blue Economy will work very closely with other state departments. Mm -hmm. I've spoken about the State Department for Tourism, mm -hmm. the areas where we can be able to do exploitation of the blue economy activities. Yes. We have spoken about shipping and maritime. We have spoken about mining. There's also another potential area of uh, energy, wind energy, mm -hmm. tide energy. These are areas that the State Department of Energy is exploiting. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are doing various studies to look at the potential areas that we can do tide energy. Mm -hmm. The State Department for Petroleum, they're also looking at potential areas that we can have uh, oil and gas. Those are also blue economy activities. Mm -hmm. The State Department for ICT mm -hmm. has been able to do a lot within that space through the undersea cables. Mm -hmm. They have landed at least six undersea cables at the port of Mombasa. Mm -hmm. So these are the areas that uh, the government is doing, but we are doing in conjunction with other State Departments. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, brilliant. And looking at the strategy reports and the policy that you know the policy and strategy reports that uh, like the aquaculture handbook of kenya 2021 mm -hmm. um, such reports and such uh, mechanisms that the government has come through mm -hmm. are you seeing that whatever has been developed in the past mm -hmm. uh, has laid the proper foundation for what you are doing as ministry yes absolutely mm -hmm. uh, as i started earlier and said we have a brilliant team mm -hmm. Uh, we have had brilliant PSs before me, brilliant ministers, and uh, they have laid down the foundation of uh, the department, mm -hmm. whether it's in fisheries, whether it's in aquaculture, and also within the blue space. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we are doing now is speaking from where they left and continue developing these tools. Mm -hmm. Any investor who wants to come to Kenya, mm -hmm. they'll first look at your policy. They look at, at your regulation, they look at your strategy, then they'll be able to make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. You as George, if you want to start aquaculture farming, mm -hmm. you'll be able to look at these documents and look at the potential areas and the ways and the dots and the do's of what you can do. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank uh, my team, mm -hmm. whether it's the State Department and the various uh, state corporations, mm -hmm. because they have worked to develop these uh, instruments we continue to develop more, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll continue to support uh, Kenyans mm -hmm. to be able to explore this space. Mm -hmm. Yes, Brilliant. so it was a good foundation. It was a good foundation. Um, let's look at some feedback here. Um, don't say your name. Please start with your name and where you're watching us from. Uh, you say uh, you're watching us from the county of Embu. You're asking what uh, can be done, especially for people in areas that are semi are hot. Um, can, what are some of the activities for one to venture into the aquaculture mm -hmm. uh, in areas that are not as, uh, you know, conducive, that are relatively hot, mm -hmm. and to be able to ensure that they tap into these uh, investments as well? Okay, thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. If you look at aquaculture, you don't have to do aquaculture on a lake mm -hmm. or a river or a dam. Yeah. One of the biggest commercial farmers in aquaculture, they're actually here at Kajiado. Okay. And Kajiado is very hot. Mm -hmm. So you just need to have uh, the required components mm -hmm. to do aquaculture farming. Mm -hmm. And you can be able to be guided on that at the State Department. Mm -hmm. However, you just need to ensure you have water that is circulating. Remember, okay. there's aquaculture and there's the, the recirculation of water system. Mm -hmm. So you can be able to develop that water system within the aquaculture space so that you can be able to use that water and use it mm -hmm. to do farming mm -hmm. and also to do aquaculture. aquaculture. And that water can be recycled mm -hmm. again and again and cleaned up mm -hmm. and also ensure that it's safe for the fish. Yes, okay. so it doesn't have to be, aquaculture doesn't have to be in, on a water body. On a water body. Yes. Brilliant. Uh, P.S. as you know, you get a few, perhaps 30 seconds to a minute to be able to speak to Kenyans mm -hmm. and the investment potential and what you would like to see mm -hmm. in the next one year, especially uh, relating to your docket mm -hmm. and how Kenyans can then be able to say that within this period, you have seen an increase for someone who started investment in uh, aquaculture from X amount to X amount. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you, George. Um, as uh, the government of Kenya, through the wisdom of His Excellency, the President, Dr. William Ruto, we have put enough structures. We have developed, we have reviewed policies, registration, strategies to develop the sector of fisheries and uh, blue economy. 
We have developed Kenya Fisheries uh, Policy. We're in the process of developing aquaculture policy. We have also in the process of developing the blue economy strategy and also the regulations that will be able to support in governance of this sector. In terms of uh, infrastructure development, we are in the process of building infrastructure development within the lake region. That is Lake Victoria, Lake Trukana, Lake Naivasha, and also within the Indian Ocean. In terms of also in matters of planning, mm -hmm. we have developed marine spatial plan in the lake region, Lake Victoria that is, and also Indian Ocean. These marine spatial plans will be able to show the potential areas for any investor, either an individual investor, either a local investor, or regional investor, or international investor in this blue space. So we can be able to tap the potential of blue economy through these components. Mm -hmm. And also to mention is that the government of Kenya through the State Department, we have a very open door policy. Mm -hmm. Any support you require as a Kenyan or an investor, we are open. We'll be there to advise you, to guide you on the best practices within the fishery sector or any other activities. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, it's just to support our fisher folk. The fisher folk community, which are the beach management units, they're very vibrant and they really want this space to continue working and increase and ensure there's food security, there's job creation, and also there's revenue generation. Mm -hmm. So with all those components, Blue Economy and Fisheries Department, we are looking forward to a fisher community in the sense of uh, increasing our fish consumption per capita from around uh, 3.5 to 4 mm -hmm. kg to at least 8 to 10 kgs, which is the African market. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you so much. What a way to wind up the program. I see a lot of feedback. Uh, guys are watching this. Uh, Thomas watching from uh, Nairobi. He says, well represented. Uh, representing his uh, town uh, to be able to listen to the peers. Um, there is also a feedback from Mayura Martin who says, uh, my sister, you have very nice words, but quite ground, more needs to happen. Uh, please make sure then that perhaps uh, you're able to target and also reach those who are, are going through aquaculture and being able to uh, invest in such opportunities. We've been speaking to Betsy Njagi, Principal Secretary uh, for Blue Economy and Fisheries. Thank you so much, Piers, for so granting much. us and also speaking to us and being with us all this well. It's been a yes. great pleasure. And of course, we want to thank you as well for your feedback. My name is George Maringa, Rodan. Yamai was a sign language interpreter earlier on. We want to wish you a wonderful night from Nairobi. I'll see you tomorrow on The People's Good. Good night for now. Thank you. Good night. katika mfahamu kiongozi tutakuletea viongozi aina mbalimbali mbali.